What's up guys and welcome to the channel. So I have been living in LA for a couple months now and I've explored so much cool stuff in this city. I want to show you 10 things you cannot miss if you are traveling to Los Angeles. Let's get started. All right, so something you have to do when you're in LA, no questions asked, is a sunrise hike at Griffith Park up to the observatory. I recommend doing the Boy Scout Trail, which is about a mile and a half loop up and down to the observatory. It's a really pretty easy hike, just uphill obviously a little bit. When you get up to the observatory, the views are incredible. And I did wait for it to turn into civil twilight to get a little light out because otherwise if it's too dark, you really have to be careful because while the risks are probably low, the coyotes, the mountain lions, the snakes, the bears, they all come out at night. If you do wanna hike this really early in the morning, bring a flashlight, maybe a knife. And I see a coyote. Oh my God. Oh my God, there's a coyote right behind me. Oh, what do I do? Okay, false alarm. It was not a coyote. It's just someone's dog. That did scare me. Legit, who are all these crazy people that wake up early to do this? Aside from me. So I made it to the top of the observatory and it is beautiful. There you got a view of downtown LA to the whole city and then a great view of the Hollywood sign right over there. Wow. If you do want to avoid the crowds and the people, you have to come early in the morning for sunrise. If you come at sunset, it's going to be a lot of people, obviously, because everyone is up and you don't have to wake yourself up early in the morning, which many people, including myself, do not like to do. But as you can see around me, there is literally no one here. I am the only one here. This is great. I feel like I have the entire observatory to myself. You cannot get this at any other time of the day. So why not come really early, start your day here, and then explore the rest of Los Angeles. All right, so since I do obviously have a really early morning start to my day, I cannot wait to explore the next nine things on my list of what to do in Los Angeles. Let's do it. All right, I just got to Melrose Avenue, which is one of LA's most famous streets. It has a ton of shopping, dining, and entertainment all along the strip. I started just west of the Pacific Design Center, which is a really fun looking red and blue building here on Melrose, passing by one of my favorite restaurants in LA, Gracias Madres, which is an upscale vegan Mexican restaurant. I absolutely love the food and the vibe here. And right across the street is a restaurant called Craig's, which is literally a celebrity hotspot. Every time you go there, you're pretty much guaranteed to see someone famous. When I was at Gracias Madres the other day, walking back to my car, I was pretty much caught in a paparazzi photo. But don't even try getting a reservation there because it is near impossible. And when walking east past the Pacific Design Center, you'll pass by another great restaurant here on Melrose, Earth Cafe, which is pretty well known for its food, coffee, vibe, and being pretty popular on Instagram. And if you're looking for a great place to grab a drink, EPNLP is an amazing rooftop bar with great views of the Hollywood Hills. And right near EPNLP, you'll turn onto Melrose Place, which is a small, famous, fancy little block full of upscale boutiques and cafes, including Alfred, which I'm actually gonna get. I'm gonna head over to Beverly Hills right now, get some coffee over there, and go for a little stroll on Rodeo Drive. All right, I'm 
sitting right in front of the famous Beverly Hills sign in the gardens. I just went to Alfred Coffee, which is right across the street, to get an iced vanilla latte, which they claim is world famous. And honestly, it's so damn good that I believe them. I'm gonna sit here for a little bit and enjoy my coffee. And then I'm gonna go take a stroll on Rodeo Drive, which is obviously a can't miss spot here in Beverly Hills. And right next to the sign is Beverly Drive, which is honestly the most photogenic and beautiful street in LA. Definitely stop here for some pictures to pretend like you're an influencer. Rodeo Drive is full of really fancy and expensive stores that are not in my budget today, but still worth it to just take a walk along this street and see all the stores and fancy cars. People love to show off their fancy cars here. They'll often just park along this street just for people to take pictures of them and stroke their ego. This road is so pristine and classy that I feel really underdressed wearing my Adidas shirt here. And to Rodeo Drive is a perfect place to take pictures. At least we can say that window shopping is fun. And a great perk is that you can get public parking for free up to two hours right next to Rodeo Drive, which you don't get much in LA, so enjoy the free parking. Now I just gotta find my car and remember where I park. <laughs> So I am at The Grove right now, which is a less pretentious version of Rodeo Drive, but still really popular and famous here. Lots of shops and restaurants. I am at the famous Originals Farmer's Market here. I was about to get a slice of pizza because I'm from New York, but since I'm in California, I went for the tacos and they are amazing. And because LA is known for its donuts, I had to try one at Bob's Donuts because they claim they have the best ones in LA. Let's see. Wow. Okay, so being from New York, I really only know Dunkin' Donuts. That's the only donut I've really grown up with. This one knocks it out of the park. Well done. I just had a great lunch and a donut at the Grove. I'm doing my second hike for the day at my absolute favorite hike in LA, Runyon Canyon. You can start or park at 2000 North Fuller Ave for the entrance to the park, hike a little bit up and then turn left onto F1 to hike up the canyon. This is my favorite hike in LA because it's strenuous, it's challenging, and it's definitely more difficult than what I did this morning at Griffith. And it offers incredible views of the entire city as well, maybe even better. Honestly, the best time to hike Runyon is at sunset, which I'm probably going to do in a whole separate vlog just dedicated to a sunset hike at Runyon because it's that amazing. So definitely subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. That will be coming soon. An honorable mention as well to the hike to the Hollywood sign. I'm not gonna do that today, but I did do it in a separate vlog. You can check it out in the description below. That one is an amazing and something that you should cross off your bucket list. Definitely bring good shoes for this hike because it does get a little dangerous in spots. Not like you're gonna fall to your death, but best to be just a little bit more prepared. And you have some little friends that hike along with you, little geckos or lizards, whatever they call them. I actually haven't seen a lizard here in LA. The only time I've seen them was a bunch of them in Palm Springs. As long as they're not rattlesnakes because I have a deep fear of rattlesnakes here in California. And let's be real, you cannot really complete a hike here in Los Angeles without getting a green juice after. So I came to my favorite place to get one, Creation Organic Juicery. Mm. 
you know you're an adult when you find green juices like this actually good. Eight-year-old me would have hated this. And the love it or hate it, right near Runyon Canyon, you'll find the Hollywood Walk of Fame right here at Hollywood Boulevard. All right, I'm standing outside the iconic TCL Chinese Theater, which is currently closed due to COVID. It has so much history in Hollywood with red carpet premieres and events and celebrities. And then pretty much right next door, you got a random Target. But who doesn't love Target, let's be real. I can't do it anymore. I am leaving effective immediately. If you are a first time visitor, do it once, get a souvenir, check out the theater, and then never do it again. And now it is time to go to my favorite parts of LA, the beaches. I just drove down from the east side to Malibu, California for one of my favorite beaches at El Manador State Beach. I'm here with my friends. This is Jenny's birthday today. Woo! Happy birthday, Jenny. Jenny, how is your birthday so far in El Manador State Beach? It's amazing. The weather is beautiful. The beach is beautiful. The company is beautiful. You literally cannot miss Malibu. It's my favorite part of LA. I mean, it's so beautiful. Perfect day. Now, Malibu is pretty far from LA. It's been an hour drive just from Santa Monica, which I'm gonna go to next, but it is so worth it. This place is so beautiful, and El Matador State Beach is one of a kind. Spend some time going under the caves. Honestly, if you do have a birthday coming up, this is the perfect place to do so. And after exploring the pristine beaches of Malibu, you gotta head south to Santa Monica. It turned out to be a hot day. 80 degrees here, I had to put my tank on. Of course, you cannot spend however long in LA and not go to the Santa Monica Pier. The Santa Monica Pier is pretty unique because it's not just a pier, but it's also an amusement park. So if you're looking to ride a Ferris wheel, Santa Monica Pier is the perfect place to do so. It also marks the end of the iconic Route 66. Get your funnel cakes, fish tacos, ice cream, and souvenirs here at the Santa Monica Pier. And when you've had enough of the activities and crowds, right next to it is the famous original Muscle Beach. It's where Gold's Gym began, and the original one is right down the street. But be prepared for a lot of bodybuilders who love to show off their muscles because it is a very pretentious spot. I did a pull-up challenge with a friend actually recently. You can check it out on another video I did, A Day in Venice. Skaters love this spot because it draws a lot of crowds where they can show off all their skills. Now, the Venice Boardwalk might be one of the weirdest spots in Los Angeles, but also one of the coolest. It's a little less family friendly than the Santa Monica Pier as it gives off major stoner vibes. I can pretty much smell marijuana the entire way here. But if you're into that, great, it is legal here in California. And you simply cannot end a day in LA without catching a great sunset. So I am headed to my favorite spot for that. Let's go check it out. I don't wanna stay here, no. Ain't gonna keep it low now. If you wanna go, let's go. Let's wrap it up and hit the road. Such an amazing ride right here. I love California. Now this is actually the same bike path I was just on in Venice and Santa Monica. It actually stretches 22 miles from the Palisades right next to Santa Monica all the way to Palos Verdes. Beach. 
beach is the perfect place to just sit down in the sand and catch the sunset. If you're here with your travel buddies, grab a blanket and have a picnic. If you're here alone like me, enjoy your solitude, watch the sunset, and admire LA. You, you gotta it has been a long day from sunrise to sunset, but today reminded me why LA is such a great city. Time to go home and chill out. The things that we'll do, cause I Gas Tass of DC. Right off Melrose Place. Yeah. Yeah. Good friends. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh,